first finding was made by hiker James Rankin in early October of 2016. James had been hiking in Berkeley Jackson County Park when he came across an old campsite. But disturbingly, all around the campsite were multiple different missing person posters taped onto trees. The posters themselves were completely real, featuring real missing people across different US states. Upon his discovery, James would quickly start recording. Okay, um, we're deep, deep, deep in the woods. Sort of, we're like on the border, cause like there's a side of the woods where there's people's houses. But I came to a trail that led to a trail that led to a trail up the hill, but I saw what looked like a fire pit. And remember, we're still in the woods. We're still in the f woods, right? I don't know what this is. Do you see the f trees? Little white. Okay. I was like, okay, these are probably no trespassing signs, or maybe it's something for the for the wildlife or something. Look what these f are. Utah, Florida, they're all different. They're all different. Every single one. This one's from Georgia. And look at it. Like, look, look where the f we are. Who the f does something like this? And we got this one. And it's obviously these, you can tell, these aren't new. Like, not just that this is 2012, Noblesville, Indiana, right? Look at the tape. Look at the water damage. These bits have been hanging up for a, a, a while. Let me just, uh... Look at that. And over here in the middle of the fire pit, that's a shovel. James would ultimately report the finding to the police. Though, upon further investigation, police would write it off as someone's Halloween decorations. James, however, was not satisfied with this investigation. His discovery took place on October 3rd, and according to James, the posters themselves did not look like they were set up recently. Later that same year, James would return to the campsite, but this time be stopped by multiple no trespassing signs. Okay, I'm not, first of all, I am not violating any of these no trespassing signs. I'm simply not. I came here only to show you and get it on tape and leave. From here, we can see down there, that's the clearing. Uh, so anyway, what they've done, they printed out their own no trespassing signs, homemade. I'm assuming these are all legally binding. I have no way of knowing, so I'm not taking any chances. You can see, they attach them to the trees with ordinary masking tape. These aren't even laminated. This is posted, private property, no trespassing. Violators will be prosecuted. And we've got, uh, got one there, one there, one there. Because the police had already closed their investigation, this would pretty much mark the end of the whole situation. Back in 2013, a man named Phil Poling would upload this video to his YouTube channel. The video features Phil out late at night in his neighborhood, located in Mission, Oregon. Phil claimed to have heard strange noises echoing around outside his neighborhood only a few minutes prior, which is why he was outside in the first place. Once he reached a nearby forest that was only around 200 feet from his house, he would again hear the noises. And this is where he started recording. January 21st, about 11 p.m. Uh, I'm a couple hundred feet from my house. You can hear it going off in the background right now. Kind of sounds weird. Uh, kind of sounds doggish, hyena-ish. sounds like laughter. It's actually gotten closer since it started. It's probably only 200 feet, 300 feet from me right now. 
the recording of noises continued for a while longer, until the sounds of gunshots can be heard echoing from the forest. I think that was a gunshot. Multiple people in the community itself had claimed to have been hearing similar noises for the last two months or so leading up to the recording. But just what exactly was making the noises is still unclear. This video features the GoPro footage of two dirt bikers riding on a remote path in the forest. Throughout the video, the bikers can be seen going at extreme speeds. But doing this would quickly prove to become almost deadly. As the bikers continued on the path, they were unexpectedly met with a steel cable strung across two trees at perfect neck level for oncoming bikers. At a fast enough speed, this trap could no doubt take the lives of anyone riding through that didn't see it. Fortunately, however, the biker in the front did see it and was able to react quick enough to avoid it. bikers would actually debate whether or not to stay and wait for the person who set up the trap to come back, but they would end up deciding against this. It's still unknown who's responsible. Mark Andre was a man who devoted his career to exploring the vast woods of Northern California. He worked as his town's environmental service director, so it was quite literally his job to spend time in the woods. In February of 2018, he had been tasked with marking trees, and while he was doing so deep in the woods, he would come across some makeshift cabin, which, considering the extreme remoteness of the area he was in, made the discovery highly abnormal. Mark would of course get a closer look at the structure. The thing was only around 8 by 12 feet wide and 15 feet tall. There was a lock on the shack's only entrance, and from the outside there was no real evidence anyone was there. Still. Disturbed by the finding, Mark would head back to get professional assistance. The next few days would consist of multiple attempts to contact the owner of the shack, but all of them ultimately failing. So, finally, upon revisiting the structure, the men would break open the lock to the front door. They would find a space that was clearly being lived in, or at the very least had been lived in recently. The shack had its own furniture, a pot-bellied stove, a small library, and even a typewriter. Jars and cans of food filled the shelves. However, in spite of all this, the search resulted in no further identification of the actual owner. Because the shack was illegally constructed, the men ultimately had no other choice but to leave an eviction notice on the front door before leaving. A few days later, the authorities returned to see out the contract, but there was nothing there. The makeshift cabin was completely gone. Whoever the owner was had deconstructed it, with literally the only thing left behind being an international squatter symbol made from charcoal. Many theorized the owner was wanted by authorities, and was therefore living completely alone in the forest evading any contact with other people. But whether or not this is even close to true is still up for debate. To this day, the real owner of the shack is still unidentified. This video was captured on an early morning in the middle of December. It takes place in Canada, and features some disturbing noise echoing throughout the forest. It's not clear what the noise is. Many frequent hunters would report to have never heard anything even remotely similar. Not that is. Scary as sh
One comment suggested the noise could have been a wolf that was either trapped or left behind by its pack. It's also possible it was another animal, such as an elk or possibly a bull moose, although none of these theories have been confirmed. YouTube user Rainy Schuler would upload this video to YouTube in 2013. The video's footage is from multiple security cameras Rainy would set up around his house, which was in an isolated area of the Rocky Mountains. The whole idea behind the cameras was to capture the footage of the different wildlife around his property to then upload to YouTube. But on September 13, the cameras around his house would catch something completely out of the ordinary. You can see as a woman walks out from the complete darkness of the woods. Some believe the woman was lost, or that her car had broken down nearby, but that doesn't explain her general careless mannerism as she aimlessly walks around the property. And a while later, the woman could be seen walking right back into the forest. After that night, the house owner would never see this woman again.